Hey everybody, I'm Captain Jack. I'm one of the Minecrafters, and this is a video tutorial about the mod Pawa for Minecraft. I'm going to be going over a very minimal amount of recipes in this pack, just because I know that you can look them all up using JEI or NEI in the pack that you're using. But one thing I want to point out at the start is that you can build a manual for this mod, which is extremely helpful. It's going to require dielectric paste and a book. The manual is organized into several neat chapters. You have generators, storage, functional blocks, item, and materials, and it will tell you basically all you need to know about the mod. But since you're here, you're probably not reading the manual, so just watch my tutorial instead. Power adds in some ore generation to your world. Uraninite, it comes in poor, regular, and dense, and it can be found at varying levels um, throughout the world. The closer to the surface will be poor, and the farther down will be dense. It also adds in dry ice, which can be found deep underground. This mod also adds a tool in the form of a wrench, which can be crafted with a little bit of dielectric paste and an iron ingot, and it has different modes. If you shift, right click, you see that it goes through the modes down below. Link, rotate, and configurate. The three primary goals of this mod are power generation, storage, and transport, but it also adds in a few other neat items like the charged snowball, which when you throw it, strikes lightning and starts burning crap down. When you search JEI and look through all the items in this mod, it might be a little bit overwhelming, but just know that it, there's basically only a few blocks with various different tiers of each block. The tiers range from starter all the way up to nitro, which is the most powerful. And each tier costs a little bit more to make than the tier before it. And as you can see, everything is very nicely color coded, so it's really easy to tell which block is which. The starter tier basically just uses very minimal materials and dielectric paste. Basic uses iron, hard uses energized steel, Blazing uses blazing crystals, Niotic uses Niotic crystals, Spirited uses Spirited crystals, and yet you guessed it, Nitro uses Nitro crystals, and we'll get into how to make those in a little bit. What we'll do now is we're going to start with basic power generation. The first block we're going to talk about is the Furnator. The Furnator just takes your regular burnables and converts them into forward energy, or FE. You put it in here, and it's going to generate 80 FE per tick. Now most of the energy generating items in this mod pack will have a spot for a battery. And if you insert the battery here and put some burnables in there, it will transfer the energy to the battery instead of the internal buffer. If you want to extract power out of any of these blocks, just simply attach some basic cable or any other tier and send it into an energy cell or wherever you want your power to be going. One thing to note before we move on, if you put a burnable inside of these, these furnators, the amount of energy produced by the block that you put in does not vary based on the level of complexity of the machine. So for instance, the nitro is not going to create more energy for a single block of coal than a starter. It's just going to burn it much quicker. So for instance, if I put a block of coal in this hardened furnator, it's gonna generate 200 FP per tick and it's gonna slowly burn down the carbon. If I put that same block of coal inside a nitro furnace, it's gonna burn it almost instantly but it's gonna make the same amount of power as this one. So it doesn't increase the efficiency, it just increases the burn speed the higher the tier. The next block we're gonna cover is the thermal generator. This basically uses a heat source below the generator to make power passively, which is fantastic. In the three examples I have here, I have hardened thermal generators, and the first one is over magma, the second is over lava, and the third is over a block of blazing crystal. The first one is passively generating 80 FE per tick at an 80% efficiency level. The thermal generator sitting over lava is at 100%, making 100 FE per tick. And finally, the thermal generator that's above this block here, the blazing crystal, is generating 280 FE per tick at a 280 efficiency level. These generators do need a water source to function properly. You can see here I have coolant in this bar over here, and I have it just being pumped out through a sink. This is a great way to generate easy power. Lava is easy to access good early game way to jumpstart your power needs. Now I'm just gonna pause here for a second and point out the fact that this, this mod creates a lot of power for very little complexity. So if you have the materials, basically you have infinite power using this mod. And depending on what mod pack you're using, the recipes are gonna vary. So um, that's why I hesitate to show some, some recipes. Um, but if you're using a hard bone mod pack, the recipes are obviously going to be different. But still, some of these blocks create a ludicrous amount of power. Um, and if you're not into basically easy power with, with little effort and a lot of reward, um, you're not gonna like this mod. But it's a really great, super simple way to generate tons of power. One way to illustrate that is a nitro thermal generator sitting on top of a block of blazing crystal and this is generating 5,600 FE per tick, completely passively, set it and forget it. That's a lot of power. Next, we're gonna cover magmators. 
You can dump a bucket of lava inside these by just right clicking with a full bucket of lava and it will start generating power. Or you can hook it up to a lava source and pump lava directly into it and it will fill up and it will generate power. Now the hardened version of this generates 200 Fe per tick while the nitro version of this generates 40,000 Fe per tick, which is a lot, but you just got to remember that this thing is going to burn lava extremely quickly, so you really need to have a lot of lava to make this a viable energy source. Next, the power mod adds solar panels into it, which are as straightforward as straightforward can be. You make the solar panel, you drop it down, you hook it up to a wire or a energy collection device, and it makes power during the day when there's sunlight. The starter version clocks in at 80 Fe per tick, and the nitro version creates a whopping 160,000 Fe per tick. Crazy. Now, since I know most of you just aren't reading the manual, you can use a, an Enderman and a photoelectric pane to create something new. Shift right click, and you get a lens of Ender. Once you have the lens of Ender, you can right click it into a solar panel to make it be able to collect power even if there's no light source above it which is crazy good. Just really quick, want to note before we move on the seven different types of cable that you can make in this pack. The cable is going to require different levels of capacitors and dielectric rods. Some of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical, but these are the items that you're going to use to get power from one place to another. Now I'm going to cover the multi-block that probably most of you are here to uh, find out how this works, and that are the power reactors. These reactors are incredibly powerful and they will generate more Fe per tick than any other block that we've already gone over. So we have the starter one capable of generating 250 Fe per tick, basic 1,000, hardened 2,500, blazing 10,000, and then 25,000, 100,000, and finally a absolutely ridiculous 500,000 Fe per tick. Building these reactors is very simple. Just collect 36 of each type of reactor block that you want, right click it in the world and it's going to build the reactor around the middle block that you selected. There it is, perfect. The GUI inside the reactor is very simple. Basically, we're going to need some carbon, redstone, coolant, water, and fuel. The uraninite goes in the center slot here and you can see it filling up over here. Now this is generating power and it's generating 1.3 Fe per tick, and that's just based on how much is in here, but it's not really a lot. And it's going to continually decrease because these reactors actually create more power the more full everything is. And that goes for all four slots. Ideally, you want to have a full stack of uraninite in the center to create the most power possible. So with just uraninite and no water, I'm generating 10,000 Fe per tick. And you can see as I consume the fuel, as it gets closer to the bottom, it's going to consume less and less, and then it's going to jump back up. Here's an example of some of the stuff that you can use inside. So uraninite obviously is a fuel. Carbon, you can use coal, coke coal, you can use blocks of anything. As long as it's carbon, you can put it in there. Redstone, pretty straightforward. You can only use redstone. Um, I would recommend using blocks if you have a ton of materials, but either way, it doesn't really matter. And finally, you can use snow, ice, dry ice, or blue snow. You can see right now at my peak, I'm generating about 10,000 Fe per tick with no water and only fuel. It's at 700 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pipe some water into it, and you'll see that the temperature is going to start to decrease and the fuel is going to be consumed more slowly. If I add dry ice, the temperature is going to drop precipitously here, probably down to like 5 degrees Celsius or something ridiculous, and it's going to consume my fuel a lot less quickly, thus increasing the efficiency. If I add redstone and carbon, my generation factor is up to 20,000 Fe per tick, and this is a happy reactor. One of the great features of these reactors is this auto mode, and you can set it so that when you click this, it will stop when it's full and start again when it has 70% of its energy. I would highly recommend this, and it avoids wasting any of your precious uh, resources here. You can control these reactors with um, redstone signals, and that is right here. So you can do on, off, or ignore. And if you want to control it with redstone, you have to either use a lever, a pipe, some sort of redstone interacting device on one of these slots right here. These are the access ports. It will not work anywhere else. However, if you want to pump in items or fluids, 
it will actually connect to any part of the reactor. It doesn't necessarily need to be on the access ports. I believe the correct method is actually piping items to the top of the reactor and then taking out items maybe through the bottom. Could be a difference based on mod pack, I'm not really sure. Um, but right now, in this mod pack I'm using, which is ATM7, you can kind of pipe things in and out wherever you want. Here's an example of a nitro reactor, fully fueled with coke coal, redstone, dry ice, and uraninite, and it's creating 478,000 Fe per tick. Really not sure what I can do to inch it closer to 500k. If you know, drop it in the comments below, and I'll pin the comment. Now at this point in the video, you might be screaming at your screen saying, but Captain, you haven't showed us how to make any of this stuff. Well, you're right, but you're about to learn. So once you get beyond the basic tier, you are going to need energized steel, which is this stuff right here. And that is going to be made in a very specific way. What you're going to need to craft all the upper tiers is an energizing rod of whatever tier that you can afford. Now, I'm just gonna mention this in passing, that the higher the tier, the more energy can pass through it, the quickly you're gonna charge up your items. So I would recommend getting the highest tier possible available to you before you try to make things beyond that tier. Once you make your first rod, you can attach it directly onto a power storage device, or you can throw it onto one of your cables. If you can spare the resources, the best way to use the energizing orb is to use full blocks of items at a time. That way you do less crafting recipes. So if you put a block of iron, and a block of gold into one orb, it will make a block of energized steel. If you put a block of emerald in, it will do its thing, and it will make a whole block of spirited, and then you can put that in there and pull out the crystals. Next, you're going to want to use JEI to look up the recipe that you want to make. This is under the energizing tab up here, and it's going to require 10,000 forge energy, an iron ingot, and a gold ingot, and it's going to give us two energized steel. Now, in order to energize these two things, you're going to want to take your ingots and right-click them into an energizing orb. Now, you can see that there's a progress bar, and it shows you the total amount of Fe needed right in the bottom of my screen there. But right now, nothing is happening. This is where our wrench is going to come into play. You're going to want to go ahead and go into the linking mode on your wrench, and you're going to see this nice little line here that tells you where the energizing rod is linked to. So right now, this rod is actually linked to that orb, but we don't want to do that. So in order to link it to this one, just right click this one. It says started linking in the bottom, right click here, and it will transfer energy from here to here. And there we go. We have our energized steel. Now the power consumption to make the subsequent tiers is going to be heavy. Energize only costs 10K, but blazing goes to 90, niotic 300K, spirited 1 million, and nitro 20 million. When I was playing this in my survivor world and I started making the nitro parts, I noticed that I drained my entire system just in a matter of, of minutes, even though I had millions and millions of RF. Just bear in mind, this is going to take a lot of energy to take to make the higher tiers. You can also see that the different tiers have different nice little pretty linking lines. Nice. A simple way to automate the output of the energizing orb is to just slap a hopper underneath and attach it to a chest. Once you put in your items and it energizes them, the item's going to go down through the hopper and into your chest. A simple way to automate the output of the energizing orb is to just slap a hopper underneath and attach it to a chest. Once you put in your items and it energizes them, the item's going to go down through the hopper and into your chest. When I was doing research about this mod, I was looking up ways to automate the energizing orb. And quite frankly, every video I found had some absolute Stone Age looking terrible, overly complex setup in order to automate this thing when it's actually stupidly easy. Using a simple AE2 system, you can go ahead and craft everything simultaneously with a really simple setup, and it is just a no-brainer. Crafting, zapping, crafting, zapping, and you'll notice that it's going to craft different tiers. Here we have the highest tier, 20 million RF, doesn't matter, this is fantastic. However, this will be a separate video, and that link to that video will be in the description below if you want to find out how to easily automate this. To not be a complete tease, one thing I will show you is a completely self-sustained nitro reactor. What I have here is a simple closed system, so the reactor is powering all the machines necessary and also creating a massive amount of excess power very simply. Now the way I'm doing this might be slightly controversial because there's very mixed feelings on 
mystical agriculture. Now, if you use phylogenic insulators um, from thermal, I forget what it's called now, um, you can very quickly create seeds using augmentations and have them export to crafters from RF tools utilities to create the materials needed to pump inside of this reactor. The only thing that runs a little bit slow with this setup is that the uraninite doesn't create fast enough, but that's the easiest solution possible. You just make more phylogenic isolators, insulators. I'm sure it works with um, garden cloches and stuff like that too. Um, but this is kind of two really OP mods working together to make have a really op outcome um so there's going to be mixed feelings on this if you don't like it just don't don't use it that's that's your prerogative um but yeah this is super easy to get these things set up um once you're able to get the different types of seeds to make the essences from mystical agriculture basically you can create all the materials necessary to power this thing up full time with excess all right just a couple more things to cover and i'm going to say what i think is the best for last the energy hopper is a way to take energy and put it into the contents of a chest to charge the items that are in the chest. So if you go out mining, or if you have a jetpack, and you're done mining, and you're done jetting around, and you want to throw everything that you want to charge inside of a chest at once without having to flip it in and out of um, small capacity charging things, you can just go ahead and just put a bunch of stuff in here and everything that's inside the chest will be charged by the energy hopper that you have pointed at the chest. And this just needs a constant energy source. And I'll tell you how this is getting an energy source in a little bit. The energy discharger just takes energy out of batteries and pipes it into another source or its internal energy buffer here. So if I put this here, you'll see that it starts draining, the buffer starts increasing. And if I want to, I can send that to this, but it's already full. So that's what the discharger does. Another quick note before we move on, you can take your batteries and put them into your slots, your little charm slots over here. This is cool. Um, you can actually put a battery in any slot in ATM7. Not sure if this is intentional or not, probably isn't, um, but you can load up with batteries over here and the batteries will charge everything inside of your inventory. And that battery is charging, that's suspicious. The player transmitter will allow you to take power from your power network or power infrastructure and wirelessly charge items in your inventory. So that is how that battery was charging. So if I pull something out quickly here, you can see that as soon as it goes into my inventory, it immediately begins charging up. This is insanely useful if you're like exploring the end and you got a jetpack and you have to keep going back to refuel, maybe it's low capacity. This is a great way to keep that powered up. And you don't need a nitro transmitter, you can use lower tiers. So this is still viable at mid, mid game. In order to make this work, you are going to need to craft a binding card. Once you have a binding card, it says right there, to right click to bind. So I'm going to right click and you see that the icon turned green here. There's a little button in there and now it's owned by me. Great. Once you have it, slide it in there. You get a little green light here and now it's going to wirelessly charge my stuff. But if you want to charge your stuff interdimensionally, you are going to need to make a binding card dimensional. And if you look at this, it says that you need to use a binding card on an Enderman, just like we did a few minutes ago. So that's how you get the dimensional side. So we take this out, we right click the bind to ourselves, we put it inside the player transmitter, and now it's going to wirelessly charge all of my stuff across dimensions. Very useful. Next, we're going to talk about energy cells, specifically, though, ender cells. Now, I didn't really cover these, but they're really straightforward. They're just blocks that store a bunch of energy. What's really cool is these ender cells. With everything, there's seven tiers. The first tier is the least functional. So if we look inside this block, we have 12 channels, but only the first one is accessible. And you can see on channel one, I have a maximum power storage of 2 billion FE, and it can put out 1.K or 1K FP per tick. So if you look inside this nitro ender cell, I'm on channel five and it's not, doesn't have any power in it despite being hooked up to a creative energy cell. And that is because you have to make a buffer of power by shift right clicking in either batteries or energy cells to increase the power storage of each individual channel. So right now, channel five 
has no power, but if I take this hardened battery, which can store 10 million FE, and I shift, right click, now it can store 10 million FE. And it filled up instantly because I'm connected to a creative one, but that is how you select channels for these. So now the power will go into this block. If I shift click a hardened energy cell again, now it goes to 20 million FE and so on and so forth. There is a limit to this, um, but if you have enough power pumping through at all times, you don't necessarily need a huge massive power bank or power storage um, buffer. Uh, but you have to do that for each individual channel. So channel six has nothing in it. So if I grab an energy cell nitro and if I shift right click, now it can store two billion and now it's slowly filling up. What these ender cells essentially become are, in a, are a way to transport energy wireless cross dimensionally anywhere you need accessed up by up to 12 different channels. So you can see the channel five is the same as channel five over here. And I can choose which channel to use. So channel nine has nothing. If I want to use channel 12, that has 153 million in it right now. I can set this to channel 12 and I can hook up some power conduit to it and I can pipe energy out and I can use channel 12 for a specific purpose anywhere in the world. Now we are going to talk about possibly my favorite block in the whole game. And that is the gates. So you're going to need an ender core to make these and you're going to need the energizer orb to make them. So they're not cheap, but functionally they are fantastic. Once again, we have all seven tiers available to us from starter to nitro. And these things, once you craft them, basically you slap them on any machine. So I can't slap them here. I can slap them onto a wire and they are linked up to our, our ender um, cells and you select the channel with the power that you want and it will basically provide power to whatever block that you connect it to with a very very small tiny footprint block so right here i have a controller this controller is using 12,000 fe per tick which is quite a bit and i can actually power my entire refined storage network by just simply slapping this thing on here and selecting whatever channel i want so you can see this channel is generating power. I forget which one 12 was. 11 was my closed system reactor. Um, but basically, yeah, you can select the channel that you want. You can slap these onto blocks and it will provide power to whatever block you put it onto, which is awesome. Also note, they work interdimensionally. And that is going to be it for the Power Mod tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to click the link in the description below to find out how to set up auto crafting for the energizing orb. Hope you guys liked the video. If you do, like, subscribe, and stay poised.